In our story today, I want to talk about little things, but especially about the potentially big impact of little things. The Lord Jesus said, one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. In other words, the the footing, the foundation for greater things is faithfulness in little things. And the Lord Jesus points this out, that God is a God who notices the little things. Uh, He captures our tears in his bottle. And as the Lord Jesus said, why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you're of more value than many sparrows. And as he pointed out, the father attends the funeral of every sparrow. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without God's attention. And he said, don't worry about what you're going to wear because God clothes the flowers of the field. He's not even talking about some sort of special garden where it's cultivated, but just the the wild flowers. God is the one who cares for the wild flowers. And so, And when we think about our lives and realize how many little things occur in a day, we might tend to gather these all together and say, my life is full of little things. But what the Lord is saying is if you're faithful in little things, this will lead to greater opportunity. So if you're faithful in the little things that happen, Larger things are on the horizon. And we see this in the stories of so many people in the Bible. David cares for little sheep, and he is willing to intervene to rescue a little lamb. And on that basis, God says, there's a man I could use to shepherd my sheep to be king of Israel. And such is the way with God. Daniel and his friends, who are faithful about What they eat for breakfast puts them on a path to ascendancy that leads to strategic roles in empires. So let's let's grasp this idea that as we move through the day, we see little things, a word, a thought. These can have huge impacts. My father used to pray before we went out into the day that the Lord would keep us from the little sins, the look of the eye, the tone of the voice, and the attitude of the heart. I received a phone call. These are in the last 24 hours. Received a phone call from a man up in Pennsylvania, and he's been involved in the Anabaptist movements of various types, the Hutterites and the Mennonites and so on. And uh, somehow it came into his field of vision that I had done a little series on the church in Ireland uh, quite some years ago. And he found in this series something that encouraged him, the focus on Christ and how Christ is the doctrine behind the church. The church is nothing without Christ. He's the foundation stone on which we're built. He's the bridegroom we're looking for. He's the shepherd who cares for us all the way home. Everything about our lives is keyed to Christ. He's the vine on which we grow, the life that flows through us that produces fruit. And so instead of looking at the Bible as a book of rules to follow, to determine a lifestyle, to realize that actually Christ is the life who produces the change in our lives. So we had a wonderful conversation. He was taking these painstakingly transcribed the messages into text and then was sending them out to thousands of people around the world. And why is that important? Well, I didn't know what was going on. I was happy to hear that he found it beneficial. It's not my truth, it's the Lord's truth. But just a little window into the way God is working. So many times we assume that because we see nothing happening, that nothing's happening. But that's not true. 
God is at work in wonderful ways, like the dew that falls on the grass, unnoticed by us, perhaps while we're still snoozing. This is what waters the earth. And uh, when we think of how gently the breezes blow that carry the pollen, that pollinate the fruit, and all of the things that are happening around us, the changes in climatic conditions that bring the growing season, the warming of the soil, and the germinating of the seed. All of these things that are occurring around us, we hardly notice them because they happen so quietly and unassumingly. So, as I was thinking about this, and here's a dear brother who has found help in the Word, and they're not my ideas, but taking that and painstakingly transcribing it and sending it out, to be a blessing to people. We all have this opportunity. You may not be a preacher. You may not be a student of the word. You wouldn't consider yourself that. But to pass on a word of encouragement to someone can turn the tide in a person's life. There are people you know that they may be desperate today for a little sunshine from heaven, a little ray of hope, a little word of encouragement. And it's in your hands to do that to send a little note, an email, and say, I was thinking about you today, and the Lord gave me this verse to pass on to you. What a wonderful thing it can be, like the dew on the grass that revitalizes us, revivifies us, and causes us to look up. Well then, we were heading south, actually, while I was having this conversation, and uh, we were distributing daily devotional calendars, the last of the run. We have been greatly held up by the COVID situation. I received these two skids of calendars the day before the lockdown, and I couldn't deliver them. And there were various delays. And finally, I was passing on the last few boxes, and we had taken a trip to the southern part of our state. Well, I'd driven all the way down to Gulfport, which is right on the coast. And uh, we had gone to this place where I've brought them before. And the lady was quite dismissive, like, well, you know, I've got stuff already here on the counter and just send them around the back and they'll put them in the warehouse. And when I need something, they'll bring them up. And I just had this hand on my spirit saying, "Mm, this isn't where I want them. I didn't know why. And I wanted to be polite with the lady. It was up to her, of course. It wasn't up to me. And so I just said, well, I'm not sure this is where the Lord wants them. And she got a little upset, like I was rejecting her offer and said, look, just take him around the back. And I said, you know, it's okay. I I think the Lord has another place for these. Went back out to the truck. I didn't know exactly what to do, but uh, we looked up on our our, uh, phones to see if there were other sorts of ministries in the town where maybe they could use them. And the first one that popped up was a ministry that, I hadn't noticed before in Gulfport, and so we got in the truck, we drove over there. They had a temporary sign out in front of the building, and we went in and met these two lovely Christian ladies, one of them probably close to my age. She had just been saved for nine years, but oh, she was so happy in the Lord. And uh, when I showed them what I had, they seemed quite startled and surprised, and they called the manager over and said, do you see what we've just received? It turned out they were having their grand opening on Saturday, and they had been praying that the Lord would bring them something special to give to the people who were coming into this store, this uh, secondhand store, and, and they believed this was directly from the Lord. They were just rejoicing that God had provided for them these 144 calendars to give away on their grand opening day. Just a little thing, really, isn't it? And yet, we will find in heaven that this dear woman who felt overworked and didn't feel like she had room for them was used by the Lord to redirect these calendars. I never would have stopped at this place otherwise. It wasn't even existing the last time I was in town. They had just opened the shop. And 
to think that they were praying and asking God for something special to give on their grand opening. And I still don't know, but one of those 144 people who's going to receive the calendar on their grand opening may be desperately in need of a verse or a thought that someone on the other side of the world, a missionary perhaps, or a homemaker somewhere who sat down at their computer and typed a devotional and sent it off a year and a half ago, ended up in the calendar. And now God is going to use that to move their hearts, perhaps to salvation, perhaps to encouragement, whatever it might be. Only God can keep track of every hair on your head at any moment in time. And only God can keep track of every gospel tract handed out, of every word of encouragement, every smile, every hand on the shoulder, every sincere encouragement, every Bible verse, every prayer, every spiritual desire that isn't necessarily put into a prayer, every tear that is a liquid prayer going up to the heart of God. God is keeping track of it all. So when the Lord says, if you're faithful in very little, you will be faithful in much, he's describing his father. His father is faithful in little. Every seed is kept track of. And someday, the God who has been faithful in our little things, in the little boy's lunch, in the stories of the Bible, a little cruise of oil, of two mites into the treasury, the God who delights in the little that we give with a full heart, He's going to show us that he's also faithful in much. What a day that's going to be. So be encouraged, Christian. You may not have much in your hand. You may just have a little in your pocket. Entrust it to him and see what he will do. Little is much when God is in it.